Do you love jurisdictional risk? Well, oh boy, do I have a stock for you. Hey, my name is Tucker Krause, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Ecopetrol, aka EC. They trade on the New York Stock Exchange for $10.33 per share with a market cap of $21 billion. But where it gets interesting is when we look at their P.E. ratio and their dividend. Since they have a P.E. ratio of just 2.89, and a dividend of around 33%. Though I should note you should always be wary of natural resource stocks with such low PE ratios, though that dividend makes it hard to look away. I should also note that all of the currency today is going to be in US dollars converted from Colombian pesos at an exchange rates of 0.00024 dollars per peso. Hopefully I said the right amount of zeros. I'll correct it on screen if I didn't. And of course, all of this data is going to be as of June 28th, 2023. Okay, so on to some technical analysis. On their one year chart, you can see that we are riding on that 200 day moving average. So watch to see if they fall off it because it could very very easily fall to the bottom of this range here. Though, of course, the opposite could happen as well. Onto their five-year chart, the most interesting part here is how far below pre-COVID price levels they are, despite the fact they're making over double what they did in 2019. PBR, who I will use as a comparison to EC throughout this video, is similar in this regard, though it has nearly matched pre-COVID price levels. So maybe that means we have some deep value here with EC, but let's continue. But sorry guys, because I'm a YouTuber, I now have to ask you to hit that subscribe button because I'd love to be able to hit 1,000 subscribers and monetize the channel. And considering only 18% of you guys are subscribed, I think the other 82% of you guys could help me out with that, right? Well, I hope you choose to, but on with the video. Here's two solid slides from the company's most recent presentation. On this slide, we can get a quick glimpse of the company's jurisdictional diversification. They operate in most of South America in one way or another, as well as Mexico, Singapore, and the USA, with a mixture of oil and gas, low emission solutions, and energy transmission class telecom. On this slide, we can get a more in-depth breakdown of their diversification business-wise. They're primarily an upstream company with production and exploration being 65% of their business with a decent chunk of 21% in providing energy. After that, there's also a bit of downstream, aka refining, gas stations, etc., with a bit of midstream, aka transport after that. We can also see their production numbers. Their Columbia numbers have dropped a good amount, but international production has bridged most of this gap. I'd say it's good the company is diversifying here a little bit. We can also see their reserves have generally been growing with a reserve replacement ratio of 117% over the last three years, which is obviously also a good thing. You don't want to run out of your main product. Okay, but how is the company itself doing? It has a return on invested capital of 20.91%, which is pretty good because that should be above the weighted average cost of capital, which in EC's case is just 4.44%. They have a return on equity of 31.71%, which once again is also very good considering you should be looking for above 14%, which is the S&P 500 average. The interest expense ratio is 31.34, which is also really good because this should be over 1.5. The debt to earnings ratio of 3.17 is a little bit weak because you want this to be under three, though it's not completely horrific. But overall, this is pretty good, though I should note they only beat out PBR in the interest expense ratio, whereas they lose to PBR in the rest of these ratios. On the balance sheet, the quick ratio is 0.996. The current ratio is 1.14 and the debt ratio is 2.68. Considering all of these should be one to one or higher, these are all quite good, though the quick ratio could probably be just a tiny bit higher. And in this case, only the debt ratio is weaker than PBR, and the first two are stronger than PBR. So looking at all of this, PBR seems to deliver stronger results to shareholders, and it also is a bit better with its debt, though it does look like EC has a bit of a better balance sheet, at least on the surface. I don't know like every single detail of like every single loan for these companies and whatnot. But now onto what you're waiting for, the DCF results. So with a discount rate of 10%, we get a fair value of $7.93, which reads as 23% overvalued since we're currently trading at $10.33 per share. So obviously not great. Though with a discount rate of 8%, we get a fair value of about $15, which then gives us about 50% undervaluation compared to that stock price of $10.33. And then finally, using the weighted average cost capital as the discount rate, aka 4.44%, it's going to actually be really, really strong here, giving us a fair value of $68.29 per share, giving us an upside of about 561%. So the DCF results, other than the weighted average cost of capital result, are weaker than PBR. Though I should note, 
if we remove the 2020 free cash flow to profit margin ratio from our DCF equation, then EC looks about the same as PBR with a 5x alone when we're looking at a 10% discount rate. So actually better than PBR in a lot of ways. I should note, I also cut out this same 2020 ratio for PBR, so it's only fair to do the same for EC. Overall, EC does look like something that's worth researching yourself if you're into these South American oil companies. Once again, be sure to subscribe. And then also, this is not financial advice, do your own research. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.